Welcome back. It's uh, January 3rd, 19, or 19, I wish, yeah, uh, 2014, and I hope you had a good New Year's, and uh, for you people on the East Coast and that massive snowstorm you're having to put up with now, I, I'm just glad I don't live back in, back East or in Kansas anymore. Uh, I got an inch of rain here last night, but I can deal with the rain. Okay, as you can see, I've uh, been got my table saw set up. I put in my three-quarter, three-tooth, uh, skip-tooth uh, blade in my bandsaw, and I took the big board and ripped it into some small boards. On this hull, you're going to need, uh, and I say in the instructions, just because you cut it out of an eight-foot piece of plywood doesn't mean that the rails are going to be eight feet long. This one you need probably wood that's eight foot two inches long, at least two eight foot two inches. Uh, and sometimes when you go to the uh, lumber yard, uh, an eight footer may be longer than that. So look for one straight grained. Uh, this is Moranti. I like Moranti because it's fairly inexpensive. It bends well, which I'll show you in a minute here. And uh, the grain is consistent, so you don't have to worry about s splitting out. But, you know, like I said, look for ones with no knots and, and a, a straight a grain as possible. So I've got them ripped into um, um, lengths. And this one, in order to get the, these rascals to bend in here, uh, I went down to about 5 sixteenths uh, on the rail thickness on the outside. The inner ones are probably going to be a little bit thicker. And the bow and the transom I will probably have half inch wide. by uh, It's about uh, 5 fourths high, about a, a true 1 inch. So um, I've got them clamped. Let me give you another shot here of what I've, I'm going, I went through to get this up. I used all my clamps and even the one Bob uh, in Alaska sent me too. So let me reset up here. As you can see, I used pretty much all of the, uh, the clamps I had in my arsenal and my, uh, my clamp bucket is empty. And I've got it set up. It, I was conflicted, as you've, I've uh, told you before. I didn't know whether or not I was going to uh, put the rails on before I did everything else, but I think probably for, uh, if you have never built this boat before or any boat, uh, we'll, I'm going to go ahead and take the clamp, most of the clamps off. I'm going to leave these about four or five clamps on uh, each side. I got both of them clamped up, the outside rails. I wanted them to um, I wanted to see how hard it was going to be and uh, how it would affect the curvature of the hull so but I had to use all my uh, clamps and started to bow and work about I don't know they're about eight inches apart because uh, there's a lot of curvature to the shear line and then you got the outside line you know curvature coming this way but there's a lot this way so I had to really clamp it down and hold this baby in place and then start bending it back up and the wood didn't want to bend that well. Normally I pre-bend these things so that that's not a problem and let me tip down to the floor here and I'll show you what I've got on the inside rails. On the inside rails, I went and I, I took some uh, clamps. I put a stick in between them just to kind of separate them a little bit. And then the clamps help keep them from falling over. And you'll see that each end is up on a block. And then underneath my weight bag here, which is basically just thousand denier cloth uh, with some uh, washed gravel inside. And okay, I've got this scrap piece of wood, but I've got it separated here and I've got this on it. So you can see what happens when I push it down, this tilts outward. That's why I have one going each way. This one will be the inside rail for the starboard side, that will be for the port. And so they're taken on a bend kind of quite nicely, but I'm going to let them set there for uh, probably another week. So there's a good look at all the. Uh, clamps that I had to use. Still got my, my, my bar here holding the, the bow panel uh, straight. And I got all these clamps down here. Now I've got my, my 
big boards in here set up with my levels and I've got my uh, extra wood here. I'm going to go ahead now and do a little cleanup and then we're going to tie this thing down and probably by the time I get it tied down that'll be enough for this video. So I'll make this video on tying down longer than I would normally have. So let me go ahead and clean this up, remove some of the stuff, some of the majority of the clamps along the side except the ones that uh, uh, I'm going to keep it in. One of the other reasons why uh, I didn't want to put the rails on now was my wires here at the end are actually in the way of putting the rail on and uh, I would rather have a, a good uh, gel magic joint and then fill it, easy fill it on the inside with glass tape uh, than the rails. So the, the clamping of the rails will hold the curvature. I've still got my other piece in here for the, uh, the funky reverse curve. So let me go ahead and uh, clean this up and get it out and we'll be right back. Well, we're going to redo this little section as I was editing and I entered the uh, last files, you know, big files, video files into my computer and I started playing them in my Sony Vegas editing program. Uh, no sound. So, we'll redo this again. I've got the hull, as you can see. I've got it, uh, all the levels in. I've got cords placed around the corners and I've already checked all these guys for being level. Let me get in here. You can see that guy's level. We're all level down the middle. We're level at the uh, transom. We're level in my little bubble level that's <laughs> saying a lot of level a lot. Uh, on the bottom here on the keel uh, centered over the center line and uh, I've got the corners. I didn't, I, normally on some of my other boats, the V-bottom boats, I'll have a cord going down to a, a nail I've got in the side, down in the end here. On these front ones, I've got the cords going down to staples into the end of the workbench. And I think I mentioned that and have it in the drawings too, so. But I've got my corners tied down. I've got the transom setting up on a 2 by 2 with a shim under one side because the, the workbench isn't uh, quite level. That's something you want to check for. And then the uh, there's a block under the uh, this side, starboard side 2. And then I've got another block up in the front which I'll show you again when we come wrap around the bow, to the bow again. But I've got that tied down. And then we got the cords down along here. You'll also notice that going from this corner up to the far side of the bow and from this corner of the transom to the opposite corner I've got cords and I believe in Japanese that's uh, uh, him, Himu H-I-M-O I believe for uh, string. And I was going to look at the book to see what strings were, but I believe it's uh, Itachi or something like that, added to the end for the plural. Okay, let's get down here. And then you got, you can see I've got a. Uh, my head. That board, tall board, is nailed into that board on the edge, and then that's set back in there. And again, it's uh, back to where uh, the front is level. Okay. Okay, <laughs> sound like the counselor on uh, South Park Elementary. Okay, and then I got a string. Let's go in closer. Okay, uh, I've got a cord going from the wires uh, on, this, on the uh, port side uh, around the beam, and then it goes up across to a screw I have, and I show you that in the plans too. Uh, in the side of that 2x2 two two, and then I've got a cord tied in and what we're going to do once I uh, reset up on the transit or tripod and come back is what I'm going to do with that string. It's important on this hole, uh, these flat bottom holes that, that you do this. So let's come back. Well, we have our adjustable bevel gauge here uh, sitting on the beam line we put in and we got it set in there. 
and adjust it so it doesn't move and then as you walk around make certain you don't whack it which I usually do at least once and have to redo everything again. Set it in gently and then bring it back up and then go over and test it again. See what I mean by whacking? <laughs> let's do this again half a dozen times and let's tighten this rascal down. Okay. And there we go. I'm setting in there. It's just a hair off. Uh, let's see, which way do I need to go? That way, so I need to... I need to relax that string, but it's close enough I'm not going to worry about it. Couldn't be more than an eighth of an inch off of the top. Yeah, it's close enough. Uh, also, you'll, you'll notice along here this, this dark brown line. Well, this is something I did for the next segment, which I'll talk to you later about. So, we've got this this cord and we've got these measurements so we know the hull is level in uh, the ends, in the middle, in the bottom the sides here are correct now we want to get our tape measure and go from corner I'm going up to the very bow corner I don't know if that's on the camera or not and then take a reading back here at this side of the transom. Okay, it's, it says 101, 101 inches. So we're going to do the same thing over here, just the opposite, and take a reading, and it says 101 and an eighth. It's so close, uh, I'm only going to tighten the co cords up for S and G's. So basically, let me tip down here. Right here. I put in a trucker's loop, which I'll get into in a second, and uh, in the cord, and then we. If it was off, you would pull in the side that was off, pull it in, and then see if the other side went out. Pick up this one. Yeah. Now the trucker's hitch is basically just take a couple fingers on your cord and just loop it around. So you got this twist right here, which kind of holds, reach through with your other thumb and your other fingers and pull a loop through. So now you've got an adjustable loop and then bring back your bigger end and tie around it and then tie it off with just a half inches usually work good I mean you know it shouldn't be under that much tension and then just to be correct take a measurement again and Still the same, they haven't really pulled it in. 101 and an eighth. An eighth of an inch over this distance is not going to bother me. Some of that could be how the joints on the corners here are. And, okay, we're 101 and 16, so we're within 16 of each other. And to me, that is more than adequate. And so that's how we square things up. Let me come back. Basically, what we've just done, did, done, what we just finished, was squaring up the hull. Now, in a traditional, and I don't, and, you know, traditional boat building, you're going to be building, you know, a heavy-duty platform. 
big old heavy duty thing can't move. And then you're going to put in, cut out, loft up and cut out all these frames that everything will be, you know, mounted to to give you the outline of the hull. You want to make, you know, and then, then you have to make, be certain that the, the table, that your platform you build is square and level. And then the frames that you put in, the vertical frames, are equal distance on either side of the center line. All the angles are the same, um, which if you cut them out of one piece, well, you never really know if they are or not, uh, which leads into, well, the Z side off a little bit, whereas in my method of multi-panels or even just two panels, uh, both sides are mirror images of each other, the way I lay it out. Okay, the next thing you have to do if you're building a traditional think boat is you put in the, uh, what the hell they call those, uh, strips on the edges, the angle edges you put in, something to screw into. Uh, it doesn't matter, I don't care. I'm not that, we'll come to that in the end. Um, and then you got to put on your plywood and trim it and bevel it and all that. Well, that I mean, that's how big a piece do I need? How much curvature do I need at the end? So you're going to eat up a lot of plywood. But I've come up with, I'm going to call this what I do, 21st century stitching glue, modern computer aided design, because I do all the work. I do all the lofting, I do all the model making. So all you have to do is lay your plywood out, put in your station lines, mark off from the edges of station lines, loft up the curves. I mean, all that. I mean, I, you're probably still building the platform and the frame by the time you come around to assembling the hull, if not completely building the hull. Uh, those things can become tedious after a while, putting in the keelsons and the bow. and it. So well, I won't even want to do that. So basically, what I, we just did here, the squaring up part, would have been done when you made the platform and did all the uh, frames, station frames, in order to shape the hull. Uh, these flat bottom hulls are fairly simple. I mean, you just a couple X braces, tie down the bow and transom corners, and then check for the angle to make certain this angle here is the same on both sides. Now, the multi chine designs I have, you know, they're setting on their keels, the, the full distance, so you got to put some extra padding under there, and sometimes I'll put one of my my little sandbags on under the keel bow and transom. I also have another little specialized movable plate that I put up underneath the bow to hold it equal, you know, to help level it. Because once you get that centered on the keel, then you can go around with the, all these levels that I'm using here to level up the hull, square it up, so you're done. You know, once you, you know, and then before we go into the jump stitching, I'll come back again, I'll check everything for level. Uh, check everything, racking this way, racking side to side. And then once we put the uh, uh, gel magic on, on the uh, jump stitches, and then we pop the wires, and then we put in the fillets, clean out and fill in all the holes for the bolts and the wires, and then we do the taping. I mean, that's it. So, I'll get off my, my box. But I don't have to make a box. Remember that. 21st century stitching glue, you don't have to make a box. So, we're going to stop on this, and it should be long enough. I've been long-winded enough now. And the next thing will come up is what you can't see here, <laughs> the brown edges. We're going to mix up some uh, uh, silver tip epoxy and, well, straight mix epoxy if you don't use the System 3 uh, products and uh, seal off the edges, paint them, and then uh, that'll be the start of the next one. So, uh, and I see my, uh, my uh, microphone is inputting this time as it's bouncing across the bottom. So, we'll call this good, and so we'll say saranara until next time, when I have a few more Japanese words in my vocabulary.